right, good evening. Let's get started. Turn to number 190, please. 199, please stand. 199. And we'll sing on all three verses. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Oh. Glory to the newborn King. Christ the highest heaven adored. Christ, the everlasting Lord, late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel, hark the herald. A newborn king, hail the head or prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life in all he brings, risen with he lean in his wings, mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. For Sons of earth, born to give him second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Good evening, Bible Baptist Church. In case you didn't know, 18 days till Christmas, and I am just so excited. Every day is getting closer and closer and closer, and we get to celebrate Christ's birth all month long, and I am so thankful that it's Christmas time, and I'm so thankful still to see the beautiful Christmas decorations up, and I just love Christmas time. We're so happy that you guys are here tonight, and we're excited for what God has for the night, so let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get into tonight's uh, evening and everything that's going on. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for uh, just doing so much for us, God. And thank you for coming and dying on the cross for us and loving us. Uh, please be with the evening and night. Be with Dad as he preaches to us. Uh, give him all the right things to say and help it to us to apply it to our lives. Thank you for all you do and it's here and pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Uh, we're going to sing number 208, please. 208. Ring the bells. Ring the bells, ring the bells, let the whole world know Christ was born in Bethlehem many years ago. Born then that man might live, came to earth new life to give. Born of Mary, born so low many years ago. God the Father gave his son gave his own beloved one to this wicked sinful earth to bring mankind his love new birth ring the bells ring the bells let the whole world know christ the savior lives today as he did so long ago ring the bells ring the bells what a glorious morn men and angels worship him singing christ is born born to die on calvary born to set his people free brought himself in human form tell it christ is born he has left his royal throne he has come to claim his own Christ the Lord has come to earth. Go spread the news of Jesus' birth. Ring the bells, ring the bells. Let the whole world know. 
Christ the Savior lives today as he did so long ago. All righty, before we move on any farther, we want to ask and see if there are any first time visitors in the building tonight and you're visiting our church for the first time. Go ahead and raise your hand. Our ushers have a card they would like to give you that you can fill out and turn in uh, and we would be able to give you a cup with some chocolates in it. So if you're a visitor for the first time, go ahead and raise your hand up high and our ushers will get you a visitor's card. And I do not see any visitors in the building tonight. So, Miss Paulette, it's just us chickens here tonight. All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and go on to scripture songs. Rain and Briella, come on up here. We're going to do the John 17, 3. We'll do the John 17, 3 one first, uh, Sound Room Men. The new one, John 17, 3. It's the one we're working on, and I think we're starting to get it down pretty good, but we don't have it quite yet. And this is Life Eternal. I think we're getting it, but we need to keep working on it, so... We'll go over it. We'll go over the men's part first and then the ladies' part again. Uh, I let you guys sit down on Sunday night. So everyone stand up tonight, please. And we'll go over John 17, 3. Here we go. We'll sing the men's part first. So everyone listen up as we sing. And if you know it, sing along with us. Here we go. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ. Whom thou hast sent. All right, sounds like you guys got that part down pretty good. Now let's go over to the Alleluia part, the ladies' part. Let's see how good we got this part down. Here we go. Alleluia. 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 All right, let's try to put it together and see how it goes. Ladies sing the Alleluia part, men sing their part. Here we go. Sing it out. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let's go through it one more time. Uh, really, if you, if you got it, try to sing it out loud so we can help everyone around us. But let's sing it one more time. Here we go. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Very, very good, everyone. We'll go over to the next one. Thank you, Briella. We'll go to the next one I have. Uh, I don't even remember which one I asked for tonight. I know Proverbs 17, 22 is in there somewhere. Let's go with Isaiah. Oh, there it is. Perfect. That's the one. Yeah, I will call upon the Lord. There it is. All right, I think we all know this one. Uh, the men repeat, do the first part and the ladies repeat it. Here we go. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation Blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Let's sing it one more time, except let's sing it with a smile on our face. Let's sing it out now. Here we go. And I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Praise the Lord that the Lord is living. How about that? Now let's go over to Isaiah 12, 2. Uh, this is the one Briella actually came up with the music for this one. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I think we know it, so sing it out pretty loud. I'm still actually a little rusty on this one, but we're going to do it together. Here we go. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is 
my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Let's sing it one more time. Think about the words to this song and meditate on it. Here we go. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord. Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Very good singing, everyone. Thank you very much. Stay on your feet. Number 212, we'll sing a verse and a chorus. Y'all can shake hands for about 53 minutes, then we'll come back and finish the song. I said three minutes, right? Three minutes. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds get their watching For silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heaven There showed a holy light Go, tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Help yourself. that. Look at Luke chapter 2 with me real quick. We're going to split up into four groups tonight. And here's what I want us to discuss tonight. Here's a burden I have. I observe it a lot when I travel. I have preached other places in December. I've preached here in December. And it's very easy in all the busyness of Christmas. You know, it just seems like we're always busy running here, there, and everywhere. I was trying to order a few things on Amazon today. Today. And Amazon was even like, sorry, try again. We're busy right now. I'm like, what? I never got that message on Amazon. Has anybody ever got that? Amazon was so overloaded. We're so busy now, we can't even order Amazon from the comforts of our wherever we're sitting, whether it's home at work or wherever. Uh, it's just everything's busy. The web is busy. Everything is just crazy busy, right? Um, and it's very easy to forget the real meaning of Christmas tonight. And that's where you have to discipline your mind in this, okay? So I want you to look here in this passage. We're going to split up into four groups tonight. One group will be the deaf. The other group, there'll be three different groups, all right? One group will be those that always wish it would snow on Christmas. Those that don't want snow, but just cold weather. And those that would really be glad if it was warm every Christmas. All right? Those are the three groups. Now, I could say Christmas at the beach, but we're not going to do that. We'll just say warmth, cold, or snow. All right? Those are the groups. 
Uh, we'll split up on, into tonight. But this is what I want us to discuss, discuss tonight. Look at verse 15 of Luke chapter 2. And this is beyond the passage of Scripture that our kids memorize. Our kids memorize usually 1 through 11 down in there. But this is more into the, uh, the after the witnessing of the baby. Look at this, verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, watch this, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they that heard it, what's the next word? Wondered. Say it again. Wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and, next word, pondered. Say it again. Pondered them in her heart. We're going to look at that word wondered and pondered. Wondered and pondered. The reason a lot of times we don't have the joy in our heart, we'll say more about this in a second, is because we're not sending signals to there from our mind. And that comes from the wondering and pondering part. And then she keeps them in her heart. We'll talk about that tonight, okay? Wondering and pondering. Listen, I don't care how many times you've heard the Christmas story. I don't care how many times you've, some of you have grown up in church, you've heard it all your life. We should never grow weary of the Christmas story. Never. Never. It should never become boring. We should never come in on a Sunday on church and just be like, oh boy, here's another Christmas season. We should come with anticipation like, we cannot believe that God was born onto this planet Earth. That's what the whole thrust or purpose of this service is tonight. And we have to work at that sometimes. It's amazing. We, we, we know what to get excited for. We, 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 we have a, we're able to condition ourselves to get excited for certain things. Well, this is one of those areas we should never, ever grow weary in or faint in when it comes to the, to the beautiful, beautiful story of Christmas. All right? So we'll hear the special, dismiss the kids, and we'll get right into this study. We'll slip into four groups. You'll have about 10 minutes to discuss, pick a spokesperson, and then we'll go from there. All right? Great to see everybody here this evening. It is Christmas season. Although it has been very warm, can't complain. Already been a mild winter so far, although I guess it's not officially winter yet until December, whenever. All right, good to see everybody here tonight. Let's hear the special from the Coonches. What a blessing this test. This is going to be. Mrs. Coonch was very ill a few weeks ago, gave us a scare. And now she's up back to her old honorary self, telling people off and had her old ways. So uh, she's back. She's back, right, Mrs. Coonch? Love this family. They're going to sing for us tonight. All the way back, I'm getting chewed out again. <laughs> oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining far through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone. Guiding the wise men on their way Unto the place where Jesus lay O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine on O oh, beautiful star, the hope of light Guiding the pilgrims through the night Over the mountains till the break of dawn to the land of perfect day it will give out a lovely ray oh beautiful star of bethlehem shine on oh beautiful star beautiful beautiful star of bethlehem, star of bethlehem. shine upon us, us until the glory Us a lamp to light the way into the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of grace for the redeemed, the good and the blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. 
Jesus is now the star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us a lamp to light the way. Unto the land of perfect day, O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. What a blessing. What a blessing. All right, so let's go ahead and split the groups. Thank you, Mrs. Koontz, Brother Koontz, and Miss Nikki for that. That was a blessing. The word wondered is defined. Okay, I'm sorry, kids, you may be dismissed. I think we got Kenny and Miss Corinna, and I think uh, Travis is preaching down there with help from Isaac Hansen. And uh, awesome. And this lady is interpreting. Appreciate those that work with our kids. Um, the word wondered and pondered. So here's the question tonight, okay? First one's probably pretty obvious. The title of the message is actually, what does Jesus think about this, okay? Now, was, as, as a baby in this passage, was Jesus thinking about all the events? That's an interesting question. I mean, he was the son of God, but he was still a baby at the same time. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. But the word wondered is defined at marveling. It means to marvel at something, okay? I, I don't care who you are. If you walked out tonight and a star was above your house and you walked out your front door because it was so bright and an angel started talking to you, you probably would marvel, Okay? But can I ask you a question? How come we don't still marvel at that? Oh, I'm, I'd marvel for sure if it happened to me. It did happen to you. In fact, that baby moved into your life and changed our lives, right? So what a testimony, okay? So the word wonder means to marvel. So what did they wonder at? That's the first thing I want you to ask your group. That's probably common sense, obvious, I mean, all that stuff. But the next phrase is really one that hits me. I love the way it says it. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Pondered is a little bit different. It's not so much marveling. It means to consider to think, to consider. So to me, it's a beautiful picture where you have shepherds and the people they made it known that wondered about it. And then the mother, who's very, I mean, she carried this baby for nine months, the whole miraculous conception, and then, of course, birth of the Son of God. And then she ponders these things, all right? So if you love snow on Christmas, you hope it snows on December 25th. You hope we get a foot of snow. Meet over in this corner right here. We'll have all the snow birds over in that no, not snow birds. I guess that doesn't make sense. Snow folk in that corner. If you want it cold, but no snow in this corner, because some people like cold. And if you want it warm on Christmas Day, meet in that corner, and then deaf, you'll meet there. So go ahead and move to your sections, pick a spokesperson, and have a little study. Remember, the two questions are, what did they wonder about, and what did Mary ponder? What was, what was the pondering there? And there's a teaching on this. Let's see. Warmth is over there. Snow is over there. Cold is right here. Wow. Jennifer, you want snow? One day. Okay. Man, maybe I picked the wrong. Maybe I picked the wrong. I thought I'd be more divided than this. Everybody wants snow on Christmas. Wow, I'm impressed. Brother Stone is directing traffic back there. Snow. Brother Coons, you want it just cold, no snow, right? All right. And then warmth. All right, go at it. Go ahead and have a little study. Deaf folk, you have your own group. Wonder and ponder, okay? What was Mary pondering? What was, what was the pondering? Wonder, ponder. Go. You have about eight, nine minutes to have a discussion. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead and head back to your section, spokespersons. Make your way to the platform. And I heard some good discussion in our cold group. Glad to know we all want snow this Christmas. Snow on Christmas would be great. Josh, you want some snow this Christmas? 
<laughs> you just big, you went to the biggest group, so you don't have to say anything. Good, next time I'll call you. All right, spokespersons, make your way on up. Spokespersons, make your way on up. Nice of you to join us, Miss Kristen. Good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. All right, all right, let's start with the deaf. Spokespersons, come on up. We should have three on this side. Okay, all right, Michelle. All right, Michelle's gonna, the spokesperson for the deaf is the deaf are here gathered here. Uh, one of the things Miss Janelle uh, emphasized was the shepherds being in just, just in awe of the event, obviously. Whereas Mary may have taken it to a whole, whole different level, whereas it was more in-depth pondering, met more in-depth meditating, because just thinking about how God chose me, you know, and really the same thing applies to our lives today is the, the thought we deaf came up with. You know, we can see something delightful, something beautiful, something that makes us wonder, but something you wonder at can, can pass on. I mean, you can forget about it when you move to the next bright, shiny thing, but, but when something's really heartfelt, life-changing, or something sentimental of, how, of that kind of power, it's something you'll kind of cherish. You'll, you'll, you'll really ponder it more. You'll meditate on it. You know, lost people can see uh, something, a beautiful experience, or think, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful story about a birth of a baby and the mom and the stable. But as saved people, we should take it to that whole new level because we know that the birth was, was the beginning of the real mission, which was the crucifixion and the death and burial and resurrection. And so uh, at Christmas, Kevin also mentioned that Christmas is not just a one-day event. It's every day for the Christian all throughout the year. Amen. I really like that, how they talk about pondering goes to the whole other level of wondering. Very good. All right, so we've got three men up here. We'll go ahead and let y'all, we'll, we'll go from snow, cold to warm. Snow, cold to warm. All right, so we had the group that was, we wanted to snow on Christmas Day, and uh, that was probably the best group. And uh, I think that we had some good, pretty good things here. So um, first of all, we thought, what did they wonder? They had to wonder what is going to happen next. Now that baby Jesus is born, he's going to grow up. What's going to happen next? I'm sure they were wondering about that. And they were just probably uh, wondering about the baby Jesus. Like, what, who is he? How's, he, how's this going to work? What's going to happen? Like we already mentioned. And then uh, I'm sure they pondered on, uh, or they also yeah, they also pondered about the prophecy that was finally fulfilled, about how they've heard about it for years and years, about how uh, the, there's going to be a per, uh, God's son is going to be born, and the baby Jesus is going to be born to a virgin, and they've heard about it for years, so I'm sure they were pondering on that. I'm sure they also wondered why Jesus was born in a manger, and why it wasn't more like a more beautiful setting that he was born in. Um, and then uh, some more things that they probably pondered what... Uh, what future, I think I kind of already said, yeah, what future was ahead for the Son of God, what's going to happen next, kind of, and then another thing that Mary probably pondered, it says Mary pondered, was Mary knowing what was going to happen to Christ, I'm sure she had to be thinking about that, and what was going to be happening next, and coming in the future uh, to her baby Jesus she was holding, and then another thing that we thought Mary probably was pondering is why, she, Mary was probably asking God, why me? And she was probably just so grateful for the opportunity that God gave her about how if she had messed up any time before that, maybe she wouldn't have been picked, but she was just probably pondering and thinking and being thankful to God that she was chosen to do this. And, uh, and then I'm just sure all of them were pondering and just overwhelmed with how Jesus Christ was born and he was present right in front of them. And that's pretty much all we had in our group. So. Well, there were only four in our group, but the Bible speaks good things about small groups that stick up for truth. We were the remnant, but uh, here we go. I think in the wandering, or what, one of the things we said is, uh, is we want, or maybe they wondered if this really was prophecy being fulfilled. Of course, we knew the wise men knew that was the case, but did the shepherds know what was going on? Um, maybe they were asking themselves, is this the moment that the Messiah was uh, coming? Um, someone said that maybe they were wondering who was taking care of the sheep as they went to go see the newborn babe. And I think that's very likely practical thing. Um, and uh, you can't help but marvel at when you see the brightest star you've ever seen in your life and when an angel comes and speaks to you, uh, I don't know how you could just not marvel and wonder at that. And uh, I, I don't know that there needs to be uh, 
a specific thing you're wondering, but sometimes when you're just standing in awe of, of this message of what's, what you're being told, uh, that's something to think about. We had a lot more on the ponder side, what Mary was pondering. I, uh, someone said maybe she was pondering how all these people knew to come to the manger. Um, she could have been pondering that. Uh, maybe she was pondering, how is she going to rear the child of God? How is that going to work? Um, I would be thinking about this. Um, Proverbs 21.2 says, Every man was right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. And maybe in that moment, Mary was pondering the hearts of the men that would be receiving her son. What will her son be received? Uh, how will they receive him? Of course, we know how they would receive him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But um, I think it's interesting how the Lord, which was in her womb, um, how we know that the Lord could ponder the hearts of men. Maybe she also was pondering that, too. So that's all we had. Well... This is kind of shooting from the hip with just discussion. Uh, you think about that. You look at verse 15. The angels came to the shepherds. They didn't come to Mary and Joseph in the stable. All the information was given to them, which were nobodies in that day. They were the low in the family, taking care of the sheep like David did, and so on. So they were nobodies, in essence. When they heard all this stuff, it was so wandering. What in the world they talked to us about it? And think about it. It was mentioned... Uh, just sky at night and the sheep are laying around and that sort of thing. And all of a sudden these angels are talking to you. That would make you wander. I'd wander away. <laughs> but, but it was, I mean, think about what they were, all that they heard. And then what they do, then they ran to this so-called city, Bethlehem, and told and saw Mary and Joseph and the babe and then gave them that information. They didn't come, them angels didn't go to them. It came to the young men. And those young men then went and told the information. That, and I th that's very biblically and how humble Christ came to the earth as a babe and all those things. The lowliest of lowliest, you know, the youngest kid takes care of the sheep. And, uh, but then when Mary heard all of that information, you know it wasn't dropped in conversation. It was probably very, very precise. She, I would ponder too, thinking, wow. Heavens knows what they heard and relayed to them because it doesn't tell us. So that you know that they were just... She pondered on that for, oh, there's lots of pondering in the Bible where the, the, you take a subject and you go, wow, you know, wasn't anybody from Harvard or nothing? And, <laughs> and to quote a guy today says, yeah, I fired them that worked for me that were from Harvard. <laughs> so education isn't where we're at. That's why the Bible was written for the simple confines the mighty, like it or not, lump it or bump it. <laughs> That's why the education can't absorb Christ because they are too smart for him. Amen. I'm pondering on that. <laughs> man, Ken Georgia, the mic dropped tonight. Man, that was powerful, man, right there. That was good stuff. All right, brother. You get up. It's a great study. I, I, I'm always fascinated by this passage. I always have been. Ever since I was saved, just... When I read that, and there's so many things that you just bring together in the sun. I just want to give you a couple things to echo what everybody's already said and add one little thought that the Lord just kind of gave me the other day, just really encouraged my heart on this thought. Um, Danette Fisher said, Mary obviously was pondering the fact that someday the son would lay down his life for us. And that is actually a very interesting subject that gets brought up a lot. Uh, some people do think Mary had insight to that. Well, we know the disciples were clueless. In fact, uh, the Old Testament saints uh, and the, a lot of the uh, disciples, even at that time, even Peter, James, and John did not completely understand that the mission, they were expecting the kingdom of heaven to be established as well. And it took a while for them to even catch on. But many, many scholars believe Mary had insight to that. She may have had insight just because of how close she was to the Lord. And as Margaret well said in a group of all of us men just over here, she says, I know what it's like to carry a child, but I don't know what it'd be like as a woman to carry the Son of God in my womb for nine months. I mean, that's, I mean, you talk about Mary probably behaved better in those nine months than she had ever behaved in her life, man, carrying the Son of God in her womb. But what a, what a testimony, what a story. And again, let it soak in a little bit. 
this story of Christmas, let it just soak in. Let it, let it hit the nerve of our, of our spiritual well-being, right? Let it, let it get to the point where we just, we just really get a little shook up in a good way by it. We, we've, we've taken it for granted. We've gotten bored with it. You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing we do with a lot of things in our life. And I'm, I'm not scolding anybody or scolding myself even. You know, you, I was at a wedding a few days ago, and, and uh, it, was, it was beautiful to see a young couple get married and do it the right way, and their parents were there and grandparents, and it was just a, it was a great wedding. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, but what happens is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road, all of a sudden you're, you're counseling a lot of couples, and what happened? Did you fall out of love? What happened? What happened along that journey? Well, I do believe wonder and ponder have a lot to do with that. And wonder and ponder has a lot to do with keeping that... Uh, whether, whether it comes to patriotism as an American. I, we, today's, today's Pearl Harbor. We forget that. You know, it's funny, 9-11 is not so far removed. It's just 20-plus years. But, so when 9-11 happens, it seems like we talk about it more. But I've heard very little about Pearl Harbor today. But, boy, it, it was very significant to a lot of people. And a lot of people that it was significant to are gone now. So they're not there to remind us of it. So it takes some of us a little extra discipline to remind people this is the anniversary of Pearl Harbor. 1941, right? December 7th, we're talking a long, 81 years ago today. 81 years ago, did I do my math right on that? It's amazing. That's Pearl Harbor. It's a day that, as they said, live in infamy, right? But when you, when you wonder and ponder those things, okay? So, so the shepherds wonder, and they, were, they marveled. They were impressed by the story, as would anybody be, right? Um, great things can happen in our lives sometimes. Great experiences, uh, I'm sure... Mom and dad, Mark and Jennifer, wondered at the wedding marriage of their son. Hard to believe. I was taking pictures because Dave Bishop's daughter was one of the bridesmaids, and he wanted me to send him some pictures. And one of his responses when he texted back to me was, these people aren't supposed to be getting married yet. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel, right? Life is just going by. My kids are on the radar soon, too. I mean, it's happening fast. Brad and Megan will be grandparents soon. I mean, wow, Brad Mitchell's going to be a grandpa walking around soon. That's amazing. Grandpa, Brad Mitchell going to be an old man in just a few weeks. I mean, and, he's, and he can't wait, right, Brother Brad? Yeah. Appreciate Brother Brad and Brother Hugh up there in the sound room. But let's get right into this tonight because I want to encourage you with some, some pretty neat thoughts. First of all, I, I think we, we know what wonder is. We get wonder, okay? We get wonder. Wonder is the difference between the, the f- almost 500 people we had here watching a magic show. Then all of a sudden there's only about 250 to 300 people here on Sunday morning that want to be in church because they love the Lord, right? They come and watch this illusionist and they wondered at that. But they missed the opportunity to wonder at the things of God because illusionist leaves and then you forget about it. I mean, I'm sure it came up in conversation and, and we use those things. There's nothing wrong with that. We want to use those to attract people in. But something happens along your Christian walk where you begin to ponder things. Have you ever thought about this? Jesus, Jesus spent a lot of his life teaching his parents things. And obviously we know his spirit was right about it. He never back-talked his parents. But even at 12 years old, when his parents were worried that he was lost, and they came back and found him, and they said, what is wrong with you, son? Did not you know we were conceived? He says, wish you not that it must be about my father's business. And he's like, kind of, are you, oh, I knew this. You didn't know that. I, I'm sure I should tell you, parents. I, imagine raising Jesus. I like what Brother Andy said. I mean, Mary was probably thinking, how am I going to raise this son? He's going to raise me, you know. So I want you to look at this. This is, this is, there's a phrase in this verse that really jumps out. Number one, okay, pondering is the key that unlocks the glass door, okay. And I say glass door on purpose, all right. Pondering is the key that unlocks the glass door. Look at verse 17. The Bible says, and when they had seen it, when they had seen it, okay, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Wow, that's an amazing story. Wonder could also sometimes even have doubt if you weren't there. Man, that's, I wonder about that. Hmm, I, I wonder, did that really happen? I wonder. Well, Mary knows it happened, all right? But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Okay, so pondering is the key that separates, that, that unlocks the glass door. Now, what does a glass door mean? So many times in life, and even throughout the Bible, there's people on one side of a glass door and people on the other side of the glass door. And the people on one side are on fire for God, serving the Lord, and the other side are sitting here scratching their hold all the time, wondering, why, the, why isn't that me? All right? Just think about some examples all throughout the Bible, okay? David showed up on a battlefield 
And he was on the other side of the glass door as all the soldiers, including the king of Israel. He was. And when David got there, he didn't have to have a key to open the door to go fight Goliath because he was already on the side Goliath was on. Now, what had David done to prepare himself for that? Why was David able to do that? Because David was a ponderer. How do you know that? Read the Psalms. As a young man, David pondered. And let me, let me say something to these young people right now. I worry sometimes how much we are on screen time. I heard just recently, and I've heard this confirmed several times, that, the, that, that a goldfish has a longer attention span than the average four-year-old in America right now. A goldfish that swims around in a bowl. All right? A doctor told me recently that you should never let your children be on a device until they're at least five years old. And then they can watch television in the same room with their parents, but never let a child be on a device alone until they're five years old. Because the doctor told me this. He says, we have no idea what it's doing to their brain development, and we won't find out until they're 18 years old. So we don't even know what it's going to do yet. And doctors are scared of that. Well, what does that do? It robs human beings of God's gift of pondering, meditating, and thinking, which is why you ask this question sometimes. How could any reasonable person vote for a Democrat? I know that's a blunt question, but I'm serious. How could anybody vote for a Democrat? Now listen to me, there's a lot of Republicans I won't vote for, so I'm not just picking on that party. But that party is so blatant now with their anti-Bible, anti-God teaching, it is now to the point of mocking God, defying God, that especially if you're a Christian, you claim to be a Christian and you're going to vote how, right? But the same, the same thing can be applied to the Republicans too, because there's a lot of them out there I ain't going to vote for. Because I look at them and say, no. You know why? Because I have thought about it, right? My people are destroyed for a lack of, right? Knowledge does not come from education. Don't miss this now. Knowledge comes from pondering. Any, yeah, which comes from God. Now, education can be taught from a book, can be taught from a teacher. And I say this all the time. I'm pro-education. I've got several degrees stuffed away in a drawer somewhere. I don't have them hanging on my wall. What do you have hanging on your wall? Pictures of sharks and dolphins. I'd rather look at sharks and dolphins in some piece of paper that somebody signed that says I earned these number of credits. I'm not against education. All right? You want to talk about education? I'll be glad to sit down and talk to you about it. I'm for education. But listen, the Bible says they'll be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because we are filling up people with information but not knowledge. Okay? The story of Jesus, don't miss this now, the story of Jesus' birth was information. The message of Jesus' birth was knowledge. The story of the angel proclaiming his birth, <laughs> that was information. And these people are wondering about it because they weren't there and the shepherds are telling about it like, man, I mean, we know it's supposed to happen someday. Could this be the night? We we're marveling at it. We're, hmm, this is possible. But see, Mary had zero doubt that Jesus was the son of God. Right. Zero doubt. She, she had no doubt at all. Okay. So it's the key that unlocks the glass door. Anybody can get that key if you begin the method or the practice or the biblical teaching upon it. Now, Christians have been spooked out by meditation because of Eastern mysticism, yoga, even some art, martial arts. They teach. I've had preachers say, I don't, I don't believe in martial arts because they teach you to meditate. I'm like, okay. You know, I understand what they're saying, some martial arts, worship, whatever. I've studied martial arts. I never felt like I threatened my Christianity, right? Because when I'm sitting there in a, in, a, in a form back, I don't do it much anymore, but I wasn't thinking about some incredible martial artist. I was thinking about the incredible son of God even while I was studying martial arts, right? Because pondering Jesus Christ is more important than anything else. Now, don't miss this now. So many people miss that, but if you begin to do that, then you have the key. Now, here's the important part. Number two, notice this. Guard the key. Notice what the Bible says. But Mary kept all these things. Kept all these things. Uh, Ms. Sherry, Ms. Nikki were on the staff. We're here today doing some work for the Angel Tree Project, which I'll tell you about in just a second. We're not going to be much longer. And um, we had one of the discussions that came up was about keys. Keys in a Baptist church. It's amazing, amazing how they grow legs and walk off. I, I'm amazed all the time at how we'll have keys and they just disappear. 
Who took them? No, I don't know. Who took them? I don't know. I don't know. I wish we could put like some kind of an electric zapper on it so someone has it like for longer than 24 hours to start zapping them in their pocket or zapping them in their purse or blowing things up or burning things up. They'll make sure to get our keys back, right? But keys just disappear. It's amazing. And that's exactly what many Christians do with the key of ponder. There was a time in our lives where we pondered. There was a time in our lives where we understood what it was like to be on the other side of the glass. They're looking in. I'm actually in at this. I'm getting this. I'm starting to understand. I'm comprehending the depth and breadth of his love. I'm starting to grow spiritually. The Holy Spirit is filling my life. The word of God is changing my life. I, I, it's not that I'm better than them. I'm just happy to get inside. Why? Because I have that key. I'm pondering. I, I'm beyond the wonder stage. I still wonder at it. But man, the wonder leads to the ponder. The wonder leads to the ponder. The wonder leads to the ponder. But I'd rather stay at the ponder. I'd rather live at the ponder. I've visit the wonder, but I live at the ponder, and it changed my life. And then now I guard that key. I keep that key. Because notice it says, Mary kept those things and pondered them in her heart. She wasn't going to let go of the things that caused her to ponder. She wasn't going to let go of that key that kept her pondering. Too many Christians give away their key or they lose that key. They have to keep going make key copies, key copies. And Snicky's got to go make some copies of keys now. And, uh, they're going to be guarded by Doberman Pinchers in the next few weeks at this church. We have a little kennel with Doberman Pinchers guarding the keys from now on. It's going to be awesome. And pit bulls. All right. <laughs> anyway. Now, number three. This is the one of them. So that is the title of the message. And, and I wanted us to spend time on those one and two. So number one, realize that we get to be on that side of the glass and encourage people to come there because we have the key. Keep that key. Don't get over that ponder. Sometime between now and Christmas Day, ponder what Jesus did for you. Ponder your family. Ponder the blessings. Ponder the fact that we still live in, in America and it's still a free country. Ponder the fact that we're blessed to come to church and I ponder. There's so many things that you can ponder as a Christian, okay? Number three and I'm done. So what did Jesus think about all this? All right, this is, what did Jesus think about us? Okay, this is interesting, okay? Now back up, look at Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Okay, so we started in verse 15 and read down through verse 19. I, I'll, I'll throw something out that's very interesting to me in this passage here, okay? <laughs> look at verse number 10. And the next word. All right, help me out now. And the, and the who? Angel. What did the angel do? Okay, what did the angel do? All right, so who said what? The angel. The angel said unto them. Here's what the angel said. Fear not, for I behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. All, right, all you kids that used to be in the church program, quote it with me. Here we go. Fear not, for behold, help me now, great joy. You guys sound so excited. Let's try that again with a little bit more energy. Fear not, for behold. Yes. All right, so the angel proclaims the birth of Christ, calls him the what? Christ the what? Lord, okay. Who said it? Who said it? Who said it? Who professed it? I right, look at your neighbor and say, you got it, angel. Got it, angel. Look at it. Oh, you got it, angel. You got it. You got it, Olivia. You got it, angel. Okay. All right. Now, look at Luke chapter 2 and verse number 15. And it came to pass as the, who? Angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the, huh? Who? Wait a minute, I thought the angel told him. The angel told him, didn't he? We just read that the angel told him. But the Bible says the Lord hath made known unto us. Hold on, hold on a second. I thought the angels told him. Didn't we just say our neighbors, we told our neighbors the angel told him, right? This is something to ponder not, okay? If you study the word Lord, if you study the name Lord in all the New Testament, it's almost always the Greek word, and I'm not a big Greek guy, you know that, but it's, it's the Greek number, it's the Greek letter word, G2962. G2962, all right? If you have an Esau Bible, you can look that up. Now, in the New Testament, almost every time you see the phrase Lord, it is talking about the Jesus Christ person of the Godhead. Not God the Father and not the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you study the epistles, you will consistently see Paul call God the Father, God, Jesus Christ, Lord, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, or Holy Ghost, right? Stay with me now. 
And at every knee, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All right. Well, look what the angel said here when he proclaims him. David is Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So as you study it out, this is so kind of, kind of cool, you'll find that the Lord always refers to Jesus Christ. But the shepherds were told by who? But when the shepherds were talking to each other, they said, let's go tell everybody what the who told us? The Lord told us. So what does Jesus think about all this? I'll tell you what he thinks. He thinks very good thoughts about it because he planned it before his own birth. Think about this. Before the Son of God was conceived in Mary, he was sitting in heaven with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord prepared his own birth. And the Lord prepared his own arrival to earth. And the Lord told the angel. And the Lord instructed the angel. And the Lord reminded the angel of everything he was supposed to do. And the angel, of course, obeys the Lord because whatever the Lord says, the angels are going to do. The Bible does not say the angel of the Lord in this passage. It says angels. Angel of the Lord sometimes is a reference of one of the Godhead. It is talking about God. And that's a phrase you see in the Old Testament. But the Lord is specifically talking about one person of the Godhead. We know it's not the Holy Spirit. We're pretty sure it's not God the Father. But the shepherds were saying when they saw this proclamation from the angel, they actually are making a prophetic statement. They are teaching us some incredible doctrine that the Lord prepared all of this because it's his mission, it's his life, it's his birth, it's his ministry, it's his crucifixion, and it's his death, burial, and resurrection, and it's his salvation, and it's given just to you and me. Wow. Ponder on that for a while. Realize how important you are to the Lord. Wow, what the Lord. Mm. Had your bad eyes are closed. Man, praise the Lord for that. Hello, Pastor Randy Dingman here of Bible Baptist Church, Jefferson City, Missouri. Let me take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with face to face with one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter three. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven, but the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things, and that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital, because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this, you must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus, and that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet, or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I'd be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, or what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again.
If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.